Okay, so here is our first podcast of our Unit 6, and it's the finally, it feels like, yay, we finally have came to what every chemist loves, the mole. Well, that might be a little wild statement, but I'm happy because the math is back. Um, we will go into much more detail about the mole and what the mole stands for next class. It's just to start saying it's our counting. Um, just get used to it. I don't know why they picked the mole, um, but why did they pick the dozen? But I bet if I tell Adam um, said I have a dozen donuts, you know what I'm talking about. So our goal is to get you more comfortable with the mole and just realize it's what the chemists use as our standard. So mole's definition, it is the SI unit for substance, um, the abbreviation for a mole, not much of an abbreviation, wow, that's not a very good M, it's M-O-L. You just don't have to write the E, don't just put M, and especially a capital M, because we know little M can be a meter, big M can be a molarity, which we'll use in the spring, so a mole is M-O-L. Um, a mole is equivalent to a couple things. It can be how many, the official definition is the equivalent amount of atoms that you're going to find in exactly 12 grams of a carbon 12. And remember this 12 is in its mass number. That's just our standard. Now this number, Avogadro's number, it's a big number, but remember we're counting how many atoms are in something. Atoms are really, really, really small, so we're going to need a big number to count. The one thing, we're not going to use this number today. We will use this number in class, but don't let it freak you out. Just start looking at it and just realize this is just a huge number. 602 and then add 21 more zeros. This is why we, we like our scientific notation calculator. Okay, but let's start with little user, more user-friendly numbers. Let's talk about molar mass. And again, this I know, it's, it's cute, it's a very common picture, but this is really not what we're doing. We're not actually taking the mass of a mole, we're not going to have any pets, but we will use molar mass a lot. And look at what this says, molar mass, the mass of one mole. Okay, that makes sense molar mass, mass of one mole of atoms or molecules. Now the units, this is a blank because it changes. Typically you're going to see it that's that many grams per mole. So that is your label for all of your molar mass uh, calculations. It's not just grams because it's not just 1.008 grams of hydrogen for a hydrogen atom. It's that many grams and hydrogen wasn't a good example, let's say carbon, 12.001 or 12.01 .01 grams in one mole of carbon. So molar mass, grams per mole. Okay, so this is to, for this podcast. I would like to see that you have your periodic table, and you know I really can't see, but we would like you to have your calculators out and your periodic tables, because that is where I'm getting these numbers. So all of you that are just reading the little um, words down there because you have the closed caption on and not really listening, read my words, get the calculator, and get your periodic table. Because as we are doing this, I want you practicing so that you can understand and you can come with questions of how did we get these numbers? I wasn't getting the same answers. So from the periodic table, all we're going to do is add up all the individual masses from the compound. And where do we get these numbers? They're coming from the periodic table. So if you notice, Molar mass is actually the same thing as the average atomic mass. So we're getting the number, it's just this average mass, we're just changing the label, that we're saying it's going to be the molar mass is the mass of one mole. So it's not anything new as far as where do I get this number. Okay, so all you really need to do is find copper on the periodic table. Now remember copper, it's a transition metal, so once you find it, look at the number at the bottom and it tells you that the molar mass of copper is 63.546 
and we don't have any naked numbers, that's how many grams in one mole of copper. So if I said I need to get a mole of copper, you would have to mass out 63.5, get as close as you could, to on the scale and that would be one mole. So the masses are going to change because each individual atom changes. That's, that's it. Now where it gets harder is just if the compounds get more complicated. So Cl2, well remember this, when we drew it, this told you you had two chlorines. So when I take the mass, I have to take the mass not just of one chlorine, the two is telling you you have two chlorines. So I'll write down, now it will get, you don't have to show this work, but I'm showing you what you should be entering in the calculator. So just take two times 35.453, and again, when I say show in the calculator, I don't use parentheses, because order of operations will automatically do that. I just separate the numbers when I write them with the parentheses, but on the calculator, just put two times 35.453 equals, enter. and. 70.91 grams per mole. That's our label. Okay, quick thing about significant figures. Use all the numbers on the periodic table when you put it in the calculator. You have a calculator, don't get lazy on us. But when you round it, make sure you have at least four significant figures because we never want molar mass to limit our significant figures. And yes, they are back because I know I could always use more. So give yourself at least four, a good rule of thumb, four significant figures. Okay, look at water. What's water composed of? Two hydrogens and one oxygen. So in a calculator, I'll take the mass of two hydrogens, add it, don't multiply it, to one oxygen. So again, where are these numbers coming from? Look at the periodic table, smaller mass of each hydrogen, but there's two of them, and add together two of the oxygens. And again, I'm giving myself two significant figures, 18.02 grams per mole. So they just get more complicated, so this is where you break it apart. This is why we have calculators. So look at what this one is. Two sodiums plus one sulfur, plus four oxygens. So again, what's going in your calculator? Two times 22.990 plus sulfur, find sulfur on the periodic table, plus how many oxygens do you have? Four oxygens, 999, add this all up, equals 142.04 grams per mole. Okay, do this one, but here's your hint. Look at what you have. You have three calciums added to this distributes. You have to multiply because remember you have two PO4s. So that means I have two phosphoruses, it's going to be a mouthful, and two times four is eight. You have eight oxygen. So find these numbers, add them up on the periodic table, and see what your answer is. And that will give us a starting place. Okay, now this shows you why we said the last unit was so important, because look at step one. A lot of times, now we're not always going to make you give them to you, um, make you write the formulas, but a lot of the times we are. So sulfur dioxide, well before you can do the math, you have to make sure you have the right formula. So sulfur dioxide, SO2, now we just do the same thing. Find the periodic table, one sulfur, 32.066, and yes, a lot of these numbers are in my head, they'll be in your head pretty soon too, plus two times 15.999, add that all together, 64.06 grams per mole. Get used to your labels. That. So if I said I need a mole of sulfur dioxide, you would have to mass out 64.06 grams to have one mole. Oxygen. It's like, yay, that's easy. 15.999. Mm, remember our diatomics. O2. So it's not just oxygen, it's O2, which means 2 times 15.999. 31.998 grams per mole. 
This is why last unit was so important, because if you get the formula wrong, you're going to get the molar mass wrong. So aluminum, we know, is a plus 3. Oxygen is a minus 2. So we're going to have to balance it, which means I need to have two aluminums and three oxygens. So on the periodic table, each aluminum is 26.998. Take two of those. Each oxygen is 15.999. Take three of those. Add it up. 101.96 grams per mole. Now, I know I said at least four. I pretty much always tend to go to two decimal places, but look at even here. Now, I could have gone to 32.00. We're not going to super stress on it, but I'm just making sure, again, look at, I'm giving myself at least, at least four significant figures. Okay, potassium phosphate, potassium plus one phosphate, remember if it ends in an eight, you're looking on the back. So your formula is K3PO4. So you take the mass of three potassiums, add it to one potassium, excuse me, one phosphorus, plus four oxygens. The larger the formula, the more your mass is going to go up. So if I wanted a full mole, one mole of potassium phosphate, I would have to mass out 212 grams of potassium phosphate. So this means when we start doing calculations, get used to smaller numbers because I'm not going to have you use 202 grams of phosphate. You're going to be using less than a mole most of the time of substance. So that means this one is yours. So first write the formula and then calculate the molar mass. So there's two to get your stamp. You have to have both of those two completed, I think you can do two little math problems. And then we're going to work on more mole conversions when we see you next time in class.